This video was brought to you by Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a totally free trial of their premium membership. Movie theaters have faced the existential threat of streaming services for more than a decade now. When services like Netflix or Hulu started booming, it opened up a very real debate about the future of movie theaters. Still, box office remained the most lucrative way of distributing movies, particularly blockbusters. But then 2020 changed everything, leaving movie theaters pretty much useless amid a global pandemic where people can't gather in public places. Movie studios and exhibitors have had to make tough decisions and Warner Brothers just took a step forward. In late 2020, the studio shocked the movie industry when they announced that their 2021 movies would be released simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max, their streaming service. It may sound simple, but it's a game changer for the industry and a sign of the times. A decision like this could be the first or the final blow to that centennial right of watching movies in a dark room with a giant screen, blasting sound and a hundred other people. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the movie industry is changing for good. Welcome to Company Forensics. A sign of the times. Warner Brothers is not the first studio to try and break the classic windows of movie distribution, but they are the first ones doing it in such a scale. They started by announcing that the movie Wonder Woman 1984 would premiere on Christmas after several delays and arrive on HBO Max on the same day. A few days later, they came out to say that all of their 2021 movies would follow the same model. Historically, movie theaters have had a significant edge in the movie distribution business. For decades, theaters had an exclusive window to show movies for about 90 days. After that, movies go to online rental and purchase to finally arrive to streaming services and TV. That exclusivity window is when theaters make money, as the ticket sales are regularly split 50-50 between the exhibitor and the studios. For blockbusters, it usually takes one or two weeks to make hundreds of millions of dollars in ticket sales. But those days are coming to an end, mainly thanks to the pandemic and because we live in a digital era where consumers want everything immediately. The coronavirus outbreak has suffocated movie theaters, forcing them to close the business for most of 2020 and possibly for a few more months at least. The promise of vaccination is closer, but not quite yet for everyone. Meanwhile, younger generations are already more familiar with the experience of watching movies on streaming service on a variety of devices and not so much the adventure of movie going. Not only the pandemic has been lethal for movie theaters, but it has been excellent for streaming services. Netflix added 15 million new subscribers only in the first quarter of 2020. And Disney Plus has amassed around 80 million subscribers in a little over a year. With movie premieres delayed all through 2020, studios have been selling low and mid-tier budget films to streaming services rather than waiting for the uncertain return of theaters. And now blockbusters will follow that path as well, essentially changing the way Hollywood does business. Of course, this has already caused some clashes in the industry, like the one between Universal Studios and AMC, the world's largest movie chain. In April of 2020, the studio planned to release the animated sequel Trolls World Tour in classic fashion. Then theaters started closing due to the pandemic and Universal was quick to think of a solution. They released the movie for premium on-demand video platforms, renting it for $20 and it was a success, but AMC didn't like the move and called it categorically unacceptable. Adam Aaron, AMC CEO, went on to say that with this proposed action to go to the home and theaters simultaneously, Universal is breaking the business model and dealings between our two companies. AMC hit back, threatening not to book any Universal movies in their theaters. He even suggested they would boycott any other studio, contemplating a wholesale change to the status quo. By the status quo, he probably meant his movie chain business. A few weeks later, the two companies announced a deal that restored their relationship and reached a sort of midpoint. The agreement gave Universal the right to make its movies available in home through premium video on demand only after 17 days of playing in AMC theaters. These negotiations and changes in the industry affect many other minor movie chains and contributors to the film industry. It seems like a lot of the contracts and agreements may now need to be rewritten, including those of big movie stars who got juicy checks from box office earnings. But Warner Brothers seems to have skipped negotiations. They're dealing with the backlash now instead of having risked it all by starting discussions with partners who want to stick to the old ways. Rethinking Hollywood. 
Since we've made it to 2021, you'll now be able to watch Warner blockbusters like Wonder Woman 1984, Godzilla vs. King Kong, Matrix 4 in the comfort of your home without waiting for anything, and all it'll take is around $15 a month to be an HBO Max subscriber. It sounds good. From a consumer standpoint, this should be good. People can now choose to go to the movies or watch them at home. Jason Kyler, Warner Brothers' chief executive, is holding on to the fans to defend his case. The new CEO arrived in the company only in May 2020, and he's already changing the game entirely. It seems like the board bought him to face these critical times with a fresh perspective and without fear of tearing apart old business models. But the guy was Hulu's CEO and a former Amazon executive, so he's both into tech and media, which explains a lot of his strategy. But theaters fear that this move will undermine ticket sales if people can watch those movies at home as soon as they come out. And it is a fair concern shared by talent agencies and other contributors in the industry who typically earn a portion of those ticket sales. Reports are already out, suggesting that cinemas may be planning the backfire and could reduce ticket prices for Warner movies to as low as $3 or not even screen them. Warner Brothers has said that this hybrid exhibition model is a temporary plan for 2021. However, a common reaction from experts and the media Media is that it can quickly become the movie exhibition future. The reaction from one side of the industry hasn't been friendly. This new exhibition model comes with many questions, mainly about compensation plans and paychecks of the Hollywood gang involved. How studios compensate stars and producers is not simple. Contracts tend to be negotiated on a film-by-film -film basis and person-to-person -person basis, but it comes down to two checks. The first one is guaranteed upfront fee, and the second one is a portion of the box office gain. That's where big stars make their millions in successful blockbusters, and some are already suggesting that Warner Brothers has let them down by executing this plan without previous consultation or negotiation. A very significant Hollywood voice, Christopher Nolan, who is also an advocate of the movie theater experience, has made statements condemning Warner's moves. After the studio made the announcement, Nolan said that some of our industry's biggest filmmakers and most important movie stars went to bed the night before thinking they were working for the greatest movie studio and woke up to find that they were working for the worst streaming service. Ouch. Movie stars and those who receive a portion of the box office sales count on the studios to promote sales tickets, and it is in everyone's best interest, and they feel that this strategy goes against that, and it eliminates the urgency of going to the movies. Box office versus MRR. All right, so maybe movie theaters won't disappear. Diehard enthusiasts, romantics, and probably wealthy people will keep the tradition alive. But it could become a niche, a more exclusive type of entertainment, not for the mainstream anymore. Why? Well, the short answer is because times change. As much as you can love going to the movies, the reality is that technology and consumer behavior change. This pandemic has accelerated these changes drastically, making our digital lives more relevant now than ever. Then, what if the studios have longer-term interests, like, say, telecommunications and monthly recurring revenue through subscriptions. Let's not forget that AT&T bought Warner Media for $80 billion in 2019. That makes AT&T the owner of the Warner Brothers Studios, and maybe they are not so worried about movie theaters going belly up now or later. And here's where the whole HBO Max comes into play, a service that hasn't had a great start since it came out. Some argue that it is a little too late and too expensive, plus it competes with heavyweights like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, or Hulu. But AT&T and therefore Warner have plans for HBO Max. The New York Times writer Edmund Lee puts it this way. For AT&T, HBO Max isn't just a convenient way to get films and television shows to the public. Instead, the platform is a key part of its wireless business. HBO Max is included in packages for some high-end phone and internet subscribers, and it exists in part to create consumer loyalty to AT&T. Now, it may have caught you by surprise to find out that AT&T owns Warner Media. Warner is made up of brands like New Line Cinema, DC Films, Castle Rock, Spy Glass, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, HBO, CNN, and TNT. But one thing that they still don't own is Skillshare. And they sponsored our video for today and offered 1,000 free seats on their premium membership. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new and premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. They have a massive category in courses on filmmaking with fantastic sessions like Low Budget Filmmaking by Maddie Brown, Indie Filmmaking by Nguyen and & Nguyen, and iPhone Videography. You can sign up for free for 30 days using the link in the description.
So are AT&T's interests behind this transformation of the movie industry? Or is it just an inevitable change that was bound to happen sooner or later? I am very torn on this subject. I love going to the movies. I love the communal experience that it is to watch a movie next to a bunch of other people in probably the best audiovisual experience that you can get in movie theater. But I also have invested heavily on having on replicating that experience in my home, in my living room. So I very much want movie theaters to survive. I think that even though you can invest a lot in a home experience, in a home theater experience, I think it's never going to mimic, not even close to the experience of a movie theater. You get interrupted at home, people walk in, you pause the movie to go to the bathroom. It's so different to watch that whole movie experience in a way that you sort of can't miss any detail. It's a whole different experience and I, I hope that movie theaters survive, but I don't think that the future looks very bright for them. What do you think? Let us know in the comments and we'll see you next week.